Okay, and now we're heading out for another walk with Patch. It is a Saturday morning. It's a little bit windy, as you can hear. And we're just taking a walk in this podcast. If it's not too windy, I'd like to talk about uh, control and surrender and then also just being able to give a bit of an update on my life at this time. Um, First of all, it feels beautiful to be talking again, to be talking my truth and to be sharing uh, what's going on in my life. And I feel truly blessed for all the things that I'd like to say at this time. It's definitely a magical time in my life and for many. And so, yeah, I could start with talking about the aspects of control. Come on, Patch. And when I think of the aspects I've tried to control in my life, um, well, first of all, the divine masculine in me is always very strong, you know, energetically, I'm always doing a lot every day. Um, I don't sleep a huge amount. I I sleep well when I sleep, (laughs) it's super deep. Um, I sleep maybe between five and six hours a night, uh, sometimes four. And um, my my daily routine is, I'm definitely a person of routine. I, I wake up at, during the week I wake up at five, I'll take Patch for a run, and after the run I'll then come back and do some yoga, some meditation, I'll do some gym, like some, some weights and um, stretches and exercises. I have my shower and breakfast, which I'm sure you're excited to hear about, <laughs> and then I go and um, record my daily meditation so that's the messages that have come through in meditation and then come on Petch Um, and then I record a song and I finish all that by about 8 o'clock in the morning and then by about uh, quarter past half past 8 I uh, finish the, the song get my coffee ready for the day and start my day job and work till about 6 p.m., 7 p.m., often 7 p.m. at um, night time, UK time. Spend some time with my family and go to bed and repeat. (laughs) Um, And that that cycle and that pattern has got me uh, many rewards. Um, I'm very grateful for for my day job and I'm very grateful to be able to create every day and to have, even though my family are asleep while I create in the mornings, I'm grateful that they're in a safe, warm home and I'm grateful that they give me the time whenever I want to. Uh, I always limit my, myself in my, my studio garage time, but it's important to just feel grateful and kind of sit with that appreciation. Um, and so where is all this going? I'd love to talk about the control aspects in my life. Um, I think it's really interesting that uh, with control, there's there's a behavior that is, in many respects, lack. It's like a kind of fear of lack uh, men- mentality or like poverty. And um, I find that really interesting. So. When I think of what I try and control, um, well, one aspect is I'm always creating every day, and so when I do, I love each song to, you know, go onto YouTube and be viewed by many people. And um, it's not always the case, you know. I'm very grateful, hugely grateful for the people that that, that do watch it. And then often at weekends, uh, I have this tendency to try and control my my free time so a similar pattern I don't run at the weekends I I have a a very hot bath instead 
um, and then I, I repeat a similar pattern. Um, and once I've done my meditation and create a song, I'll often spend a lot more time in the studio creating the song and then sometimes hours and hours creating the, the music uh, video, which can take, I don't know, like, I think I mentioned it, but like three weeks ago, I took <laughs> eight hours or something and sat on my phone. And of course, I'm not really present with my family. I might be physically there, but not present with my family if I'm video editing the whole time. Um, so that, and what, what I found really interesting is when I went through that, um, I guess it was an attempt to control um, how many people would, you know, would, would watch because what I was trying to do was create this like super high quality music video that would go so well with the song and it resonate with people. And after I, after I published it, it wasn't until a week or two later when I put it into the album video, I realized that I'd I'd only had one side, like something like the left hand side of the audio. So <laughs> I had to redo it and I felt like it was a great lesson. Like for me, the bigger picture was um, the universe trying to say, John, it doesn't really matter how much time you put into giving or control or attempt to control, you know, the quality of what you create or um, attempt to control like, how many people would, would watch it. Uh, the real lesson for me was, you know, that was really just a waste of my energy. Like, there's, there's this interesting thing about the law of manifestation, or if you like, a kind of, the kind of universal laws of giving and receiving of divine masculine and feminine. And what I've grown to appreciate is that giving, um, you know, pushing out and giving, like pushing out every day, creating a song, pushing it out, you know, being like being at work, like pushing it, you know, creating a plan for everything you do and pushing hard on the plan and, you know, getting stressed when it doesn't like, when things happen and you can't control it and your plan's running behind or your project's running over budget, or whatever it is. Um, and what's beautiful is that if you, if you listen really carefully to the messages that you get from the problems you experience when you're creating something, then it's actually the universe just trying to explain to you uh, what you should do next. And what I, so what I found today was um, I, I'm getting better at this, right? So I was creating a song Saturday morning, so I had a bit more time to, to, to spend. And I, what I do first of all, yeah, I created the, usually I create like the vocals and the guitar at the same time. It's a rhythm guitar, so I did that. And then I created the bass and backing vocals, so that's another track. Um, then I created the drums, uh, so I sat and played the drums. And so when I was doing the drumming track, I accidentally left the bass and backing vocals tracks enabled to record. So whilst I was recording the drums, I was accidentally wiping the bass and uh, backing vocals. And, and I had a time pressure. I had like a darkness clearing and healing session to do. And I was thinking, oh, I really wanted to do like lead guitar and, you know, more backing vocals and lots more over this song. But now I have to go back and also get time to do at most is redo the bass and backing vocals. So that's what I did. I went back and I just created them. When I sat down, I just thought, well, the cool thing to do is just to just relax and go with it. And when you do that, I think what's beautiful about it is that you can just say to yourself, well, it failed the first time for a reason and there's a lesson in here somewhere. And when I fail to control something, it's likely that I'm only gonna benefit. But to benefit, I need to relax and listen and receive. And that's what I did. And so I just relaxed, you know, I accepted that uh, something, something even more beautiful was gonna come through. And it did. I. I recorded the bass and th th this next time I did it, 
I played way better. I was much more relaxed, partly because I'd done it once, once already. And also I was just enjoying playing the slap bass. It's like, I was doing it quite differently to, to how I'd normally play it. And I really loved that, loved that experience. I'm very grateful for it. And so then I just created the song and then, and yeah, that was it. Um, the other really interesting thing is, um, although I'm like super busy and at work, and you know, I tend to be, you know, a lot of a lot of my day job would um, demand, you know, I, uh, my day job is in software development, and a lot of that work would demand aspects of, you know, control, like trying to control project plans and deliver things on time and. And what I'm growing to appreciate is the kind of intuition or the kind of judgment that you have. And I think that's kind of beautiful because, um, you know, reality happens all the time around you and things happen for a reason and they're trying to, they're trying to happen in a way that teaches you, um, good boy, Patch. How do you go? Hi there. So, yeah, I really enjoy just letting see what happens in life and trying to learn, like, do my best. Like, of course, I'm human. And of course, like, you get a reaction like, oh, no, like, this project's late or it's ahead or, or oh, no, my, I made a mistake recording a song or, and what, what I'm learning is that actually this whole, a big point of control is you're constantly giving you're constantly pushing out it's a very divine masculine thing to do it's like there is a whole universe and i must control it um <laughs> at least my universe um but when you pause and you listen for all the mistakes that happen there's a lesson in every single one in every cloud every silver lining and i think it's the japanese am i right in saying that the the same there's a word for crisis which you know, it's also the same as opportunity. And, and it's true, every time there's this kind of flux in what you're doing, this often frustrating or seemingly random or sometimes a very hard experience, a hard lesson, and the most beautiful things come out of it. Um, and I also, uh, also as my, as my work changes, and I'll come on to my, my life updates, in a second, but as my work changes, I'm realizing that these kind of traditional 3D paradigms of, um, you know, everything happening in a linear time, everything happening in the right order, things happening on time, that it's much less, um, it's much, yes, less useful to think about that um, as being a primary motivator. And what I enjoy the most is really practicing that surrender part. Um, and so my, my update is um, I've been... Come on, Patch. <laughs> Stopping and sniffing. Um, yeah, my update is that I've been wanting to really reduce the amount of hours each week I'm putting into my, my day job. And so what I've been doing is um, talking to my uh, employer and uh, we're, we're currently negotiating a reduction in, in time. So what I'd love to do is work uh, three days a week instead of five. And it's, it's funny, like I'm age 45 now, so it's early to be semi-retired or part-time. My wife works part-time, but it's just a well, it's like a couple of days a week. Um, and what's, what's interesting is, I think we both reached, my wife and I, that time in our lives where we're just thinking, there's more to life than just giving our energy out all the time to like, you know, full-time jobs. Um, we want to enjoy our lives. And we live in such a big house at the moment. We have like a six bedroom house and in, in Scotland that's really big <laughs> it's uh, 
you know, maybe for the U the US or Canada, it's not like the world's biggest house or anything, but we feel very, you know, it feels very opulent. <laughs> um, and what I enjoy is, uh, you know, just reflecting on that and that gratitude. Oh, Patch. And just thinking clearly about where, where we put our energy every day to be discerning with it. Um, so yeah, and a big step forward for us is uh, me as the main wage earner reducing my days by from, well, to three-fifths of the, the income. Um, and what's so beautiful about that is that I, just before, like when we were, even before I was talking to my employer about it, I started to, uh, you know, think and make that conscious decision that I was going to do it. And immediately things started happening, um, started manifesting things in my life. So the first thing was, um, I was kind of, I was inspired to uh, open up a new website. I already had like a, a kind of simple one. Um, with the milkshake platform uh, which a friend had helped me set up very kindly and that's for people to be able to book uh, like meditation darkness and clearing sessions and then um, I was just guided to take a look at another one which is uh, Wix and they it's much more expensive I think it was £1.50 a month for my last website and the new one is about £20 a month which is a lot of money in, in a year. Um, but it's incredible. Like when I set it up, I was like, I, I spent ages, like hours setting it up. And it has so many features. And I realized that as I was doing this, what I was doing was opening a door to creating, uh, you know, both an income stream, but also uh, a way of me exploring my gifts and helping others. And as I opened that door, I realized that this um, setup for me was like even better than I could have expected. So for example, it, um, it allows people to just book straight online and they pay up front. And the system, the website that records their, their details, you know, creates them a Zoom call straight away. And so, really, I just get a notification out of booking, and then I just have to turn up. <laughs> and, and I love that, just like turn up, and you don't even know like when. You just like set the slots of when you're you're free, and then people can just book you. <laughs> and for me, I thought this is fascinating because it's such a different way of working for me, you know, to basically put yourself out there. With, you know with some kind of sovereign restrictions like you know people can book me for tomorrow for example I can say um, I can give days off and I can give like a notice period you know of a few days before the book um, and I can also change my working hours to whenever I want um, at the moment it's eight till nine uh, Monday to Thursday and then Saturday mornings um, and yeah I thought I felt like as soon as so as soon as I opened that I started getting bookings really fast and uh, and then I also realized that the same system um, could be used for things like yeah, I find it quite hard scheduling um, live streams like I do Synergy Live at the moment with, with Nella uh, Nella Mahat and that's super fun uh, but you know we just have to negotiate the, the times between us she's in a very diff different time zone and uh, I've also started these what will be monthly um, group sessions and I think what's really beautiful about that is that come fetch um, you know you know, we can have like a regular pulse to these things, but I can like plan my life and my work together. So the kind of fun aspects and, you know, the free kind of helping people and then also when people want to book. Um, and, you know, I do a mix of paid and, 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 and free uh, sessions. And that was really cool as well. It's like, oh, great. I can like give discounts to people. 
Um, and the feeling, I described the feeling as really zero control. Like I was basically showing up for the universe. I was saying, look, there's something I want to do. I really care deeply about it. I'm going to invest enough time to get up and running and then just open that door and then receive um, and have confidence and have belief that it's that it's going to happen. Um, and yeah, I really, really love what did happen. And I think also the, the feeling is incredible. Come on, Patch. Good boy. And the feeling is like, I guess, just being um, completely fluid and free with no, no restrictions. Come on. Um, sweet Patch. Hey. And the, the zero restrictions are um, that I'm not constantly pushing out. Like I'm not saying, yeah, I did a little bit of advertising. I just said, hey, like if you want to book a session with me, you can. And to some friends that had previously promised sessions, I like just sent them like a, a discount, um, like 100% or, or a fraction of that. Um, and then I was also able to book, you know, regular sessions that are, you know, free and, and really just giving. And my my wife had this beautiful lesson for me, which is she said, as you you reduce your your, your days to three days a week, she said, you should not just fill your days with work, you know, um, like in music or in you know your meditation and darkness clearing sessions just just receive you know relax either do nothing or you know treat yourself or we'll, we'll go places together the days that we're both not working we we'll travel um you know, spend time with the kids it's just it's just beautiful and i thought that was so beautiful to to reflect on because it, it really made me think that the beauty of letting go of control is is the gift of receiving and you know for the this weekend or early next week I'll finish my 90th album and for all the energy that I've put in and, and given um, you know so far the, the monetary reward is well it's cost me a lot more than <laughs> I've ever made um, in, in money so far but in terms of the, the 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 reward I get from the love and connection with others and this uh, this beauty of um, this beauty of being able to develop my gifts like and when I went into music I thought that's it I'm gonna you know be a superstar and you're like create a song every day it's gonna be amazing um, I didn't really know how long it would last for and I still don't you know I suspect it'll last for a long time um, but I, you know, quickly settled on the mission of raising vibrations of billions of hearts. Uh, you know, fantastic soul friends like um, Nella Mahat, uh, you know, uh, mentored me and, and guided me around things like don't you can't create from lack. Like if I think if I'm constantly creating every day, thinking I don't have enough songs, or my songs aren't reaching enough people. I'm really like encoding that energy into what I create and both the performance and the music and how people listen to it, it's just like, you know, like, oh no, it's John with another song and like, oh, it really kind of low. Um, but what's beautiful about it is that if you receive, and I have taken a break, uh, I took a break in December, I'll definitely take a break again. Um, and I'd also reflect on would I go through periods, for instance, where I don't write a song every day, um, and that's that's definitely building up as well. Like it's, I don't want it to define me, and it is a um, there's a burden of that energy creating, even when I feel uh, even when I feel so abundant in energy, and I think it's because you don't know until you try it. And so until I try, you know, a few days without creating a song and then create a song, 
I'll be basically storing up much more energy, intuition, um, kind of lyrics floating around in my head, the meditations, and then you know, put them into into one song and create, you know, really infuse it with more magic. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting. And uh, financially, you know, I'm thinking like we're we're thinking of downsizing. We we don't know yet. We we could have we could afford to stay where we are. Um, but we want to, we have this urge to travel more. And even though our kids are still at school full time, um, there's still flexibility. Like they don't, they don't go to school at Friday afternoons. They've got the entire school holidays off. Uh, you know, three days a week would allow me to overlap my days off with their days off on, and I can just take holidays sometimes. So, um, yeah, we, we, we feel like just having a big house sat there empty <laughs> it is a waste of, you know, good land and good resource and, and someone else could have. And also just our energy, like why put so much, you know, we have a, a, a mortgage on it, so why keep putting your energy into that if you're not going to be there that much? Um, so anyway, these are just things that are going on through our minds, um, really open to... The possibilities and and I think what's also beautiful is I don't have anything planned for my come patch sweet good boy um, what, what I love is that I think if it goes ahead um, my three days would be Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and um, so when it goes ahead <laughs> uh, in April, and um, yeah, what's beautiful about that is that the mon- like the first day off that I have, come on, Patch, come on, he's sniffing at the bottom of the hedge. Um, yeah, what's beautiful about the the first day off, the first Monday that I have off, is that I have nothing planned, and. My plan is not to plan anything, <laughs> um, you know, to just see what happens and just be present. And as I go through, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, those four days off and then three days on each week to find that right balance. You know, I, I like that um, I'll still be very connected to this 3D reality in my, and what is a full time job in its, in its essence. Um, there's still, I think there's still part of me that uh, feels like it helps me, um, I guess, relate to the rest of the world. Um, and, and connect, but there'll be a time that that I don't need to do that anymore. And it'll just happen, it'll just be the right time, whatever it is. You know, it could be a week, it could be 10 years. 20 years, I don't know. <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess to, to wrap this up, I just encourage you to think about where you put your energy. Uh, think about both the focus of where you're constantly trying to control things and make them happen. And then there's also the, the lessons, you know, when you're trying to create and trying to push for something to happen and it doesn't. Uh, listen really carefully, like pause and listen and receive that message. Think about the bigger picture. Reflect on, you know, meditate on it, go for a walk on it. Think about why is this happening? And you'll get, you know, your intuition will help you. Listen to your heart, listen to that kind of tiny whisper of a voice in your heart that'll guide you on what to do next. Um, and often try something different. Don't just keep trying the same thing. And as a final reminder, when you're in flow, when you're on your highest path, everything flows. It is without friction. It is literally like you're swimming downstream with this universe's river flow. And anything else, swimming sideways or swimming against it is impossible and draining and does not serve your highest purpose. So may your life, your day, your week, your year, be filled with love and flow. And thank you so much for listening. 
and I'm sending my love from Scotland. I hope you have a beautiful day, whatever you do. Thank you.